Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm David. Today's video is going to be all about the Fair and Rail X 2024, which was the 5th and 6th of October, so last week as I'm actually filming this clip. Apologies for not uploading it sooner, but I've been really busy at work, so I'm not actually sure when I'm going to get around to editing this footage that I'm filming now, and I've certainly not edited any footage from the exhibition itself. Um, I did a poll a few days before I went where I kind of asked what people wanted, and it seemed to be a sort of vlog style video. Um, a few people wanted running shots with music, a few people wanting running shots without music, so I've tried to sort of combine all of the above. I didn't necessarily film as much as I would have liked on the day itself. Um, it was the first exhibition I've been to in years actually. I got back into this hobby um, after quite a break uh, in Covid actually of all things, when I had a break from university. But then since then I went back to uni, I've started my job, I've just been really busy, not had the time, um, I've been doing other things. So this was the first proper exhibition I've been to in a, in a while actually, and it was really good to get back into it, and I'm sure we'll be going to more in the future. Um, but not to make any excuses, that meant I wasn't really feeling like walking around with a camera for the day. Uh, so yeah, I've got plenty of footage of some different layouts, some really good layouts coming up um, that should be hopefully quite interesting to you, and I'll have a mix of music or non-music uh, depending on it. Probably going to depend on what footage I got where I didn't get people talking next to layouts and things. It was a really, really good exhibition. I did do some shopping, and I'll be showing you this throughout the video, sort of split up throughout the video. Don't be concerned, I didn't buy four locos. I actually bought this nice uh, Class 25 DCC sound. It's an older model, it's an older sound chip in here, uh, and I've not even tested it yet because I don't actually have a controller with me here at work to test these on. Um, but it should hope to be good for a fuel train that I want on the layout. I've got this Class 40, and I'll be showing you this in more detail later on. This is actually weathered by Emperor's Path, if you haven't noticed some of the merch already. Uh, and I'll talk about that later on in the video. Uh, and then these two here weren't actually from the Railex. I've owned these for a while. These are just back from Scott at the Weathering Works. So I hope you enjoy this video. It's going to be a mix of me talking here, um, showing you some layout footage, and also showing you some various purchases uh, from the show and otherwise. So the day started with a trip across to Fairham Leisure Centre. If you're not sure where Fairham is, it's just between Portsmouth and Southampton. Uh, and if you're really still not sure, uh, and the map's not giving you any help, it's on the south coast of England. Arriving in Fairham, um, I realised that the exhibition were actually providing this really nice bus transfer service on an antique bus between the local railway station and the leisure centre, which I thought was a really nice touch. I myself arrived on foot um, and I was greeted by a nice welcome desk from the railway club. Here they provided me uh, with my show guide. I'd bought my tickets online, so it was a really nice, easy process. And then I was pointed in the right direction for the exhibition. I'm not gonna lie, uh, being my first exhibition for a while, one of the things I was really looking forward to was the secondhand deals uh, or the various trade deals that were going on at the different exhibitors. Looking at the show guide here, you can see there was plenty of choice when it came to trade stands. I ended up at Aspire Gifts and Models, which was a lovely little stand in the corner of the room. They have their own plywood construction with various drawers and things, so it's like a model shop on wheels. Uh, and I was looking there for some bargains. I came across this lovely BR Blue Class 25, which at about £195, it pains me to say it, but that was a real steal for a DCC sound fitted locomotive. I've verified it's an older chip, it's a lock sound version 3.5, although hopefully it should still sound pretty good, and if not, I can always make some changes in the future. I've not been able to test it, although I think it was tested by the stall owners, uh, and it does look like a really nice loco. Um, it's been weathered, presumably by the previous owner or some sort of commercial enterprise, but it looks like quite a nice job with uh, an airbrush. Again, I'm hoping to get this onto the Lau in the near future to give it a proper test, and this will be hauling a rake of fuel wagons. We'll return to my purchases later on, as of course I did go to various other stands and buy plenty of other uh, items at the exhibition, but for now, let's look at the Lau. Okay, so this first Lau is a privately owned Lau operated and built by Graham Ashley. Um, it's called Battersea Wharf, and it's a small Network Southeast inspired terminal uh, to fiddle yard layout. And it represents Network Southeast in around 1989 or 90. Graham was operating an interesting schedule throughout the day, going in from that station there into some stabling sidings at the other end of the layout, as well as using his small fiddle yard. Um, he was lovely to talk to. We actually spoke about uh, how he'd done the scenery, and some of his Ten Commandments cable trunking actually caught my eye. Uh, and it was a lovely little layout. Uh, there's no sound on this layout, although it is DCC, um, so I've 
removed the audio is actually all I really caught was a lot of conversations between Graham and people viewing the layout. Um, but I hope you enjoy the layout with some music. This next layout was a real eye-catcher and had quite an interesting backstory. It's the Royal Albert Bridge, uh, built by Basingstoke and North Hans MRS in Engage. Now anyone who recognises Plymouth will recognise this as the Albert Bridge built by Brunel across the River Tamar. And anyone who's a fan of railway-related TV may also recognise this layout. Uh, it was initially built for the Great Model Railway Challenge TV series uh, by the Basingstoke Bodgers team. Uh, a team from the Basingstoke and North Hans MRS. Now, at the end of the TV show, uh, they were able to keep the baseboards and the larger scenery items, and I think actually probably most of the layout from the sounds of things. They then decided to convert the layout, which was initially entitled a tribute to Brunel, um, just into this feature layout for the Albert Bridge model itself. The bridge is scratch built uh, and consists of N gauge track running across it uh, with some fine scale 2 mil track running underneath and the scene as a whole is just really a compression of that area uh, in the era modelled. There was some interesting running throughout the day uh, and I noticed as soon as I came over and started filming they were more than happy to slow down trains, speed them up and even stop them on the bridge so I could take some photos. Uh, really engaging uh, exhibitors as well and I had a lovely conversation. I uh, ended up finding out that they're using a Merg C bus to run their points uh, whilst using a DC control system. So I had a good chat with one of the members of the Model Railway Society uh, who happened to also be a Merg member uh, just discussing uh, C bus and Merg so it was actually quite a nice conversation. So sit back and enjoy the Royal Albert Bridge.
Now this next layout was relatively simple, but I've chosen to include it in my summary of the show, as it was quite interesting for myself personally. This is Penmore uh, by Chris Thomas in Double O Gauge, and it's based on a typical GWR four-road engine shed. Now this is the point that was of particular interest to me, uh, as for those who know my layout, uh, they'll know that I'm building a motive power depot, probably in the next few years once I get actually enough space to fit it into the layout, as it won't fit in the layout in its current configuration. Uh, but when it does, I want it to be broadly like this. So Penmore is based somewhere in South Wales. It's an imaginary track plan, but based vaguely on Didcot and Leamington Spa sheds, uh, which are very similar in having a straight four-road engine shed and a turntable to the rear. Now, this is basically the exact track plan uh, that I've been sort of vaguely basing my ideas on for my MPD. So it's incredible to see it in person uh, and see my own sort of ideas in fruition from someone else's uh, layout. Here he also uses the Town Street Models uh, coaling stage, which is a kit I'm really looking forward to building at some point, if I can get hold of it. Uh, as it turns out from speaking to Chris about uh, the kits themselves, apparently Town Street have gone out of business. He also had a fine example of the Town Street engine shed. Uh, both kits were beautifully built, painted and weathered. As for the layout itself, it featured some beautiful GWR locos running back and forth. Uh, you could recognise all of the greats of the Great Western era, uh, just running in and out between the shed and a small storage yard area off scene. Uh, and yeah, it was a really lovely little layout. This next layout I think is named entirely to test my pronunciation skills. It's Kinloch Lagan, built by Michael Lee Marie in N-Gage. It's a small rural station based somewhere in Scotland. Uh, I believe it's a made up track plan uh, and it was a lovely little layout. Um, had an interesting operating schedule throughout the day, running a mix of different traction, although something that really caught my eye was this class 31 in network rail uh, colour scheme with a network rail test train. This layout had so much detail packed everywhere, particularly in little cameo scenes and little scenic details uh, just throughout the entire layout. So what I really liked as well was how well the photographic back scene was integrated into the physical scenery and it made for a lovely layout to get down at running height and just watch the trains run past. One thing I'm always quite interested in when looking at other people's layouts is what they're using to control the trains themselves and also how they're controlling their points and point motors. This layout was being operated by a Gage Master Progedy DCC controller, uh, and you could hear the route setting being done with solenoid point motors uh, through an accessory decoder, and it was really satisfying to hear the click uh, as the routes were set automatically with one single button press. Uh, for the main layout itself, it was using DCC Concepts slash and point motors, um, which there was one sticky point motor just when I came to film the layout, hence why there's not too many running clips, uh, but that was later fixed uh, later on in the afternoon. Okay, editing David here, and I will admit this video has been sat on my laptop ready to edit, or halfway through editing, for about a month now. Um, I think, in reality, this just isn't my style of video, um, or at least I've realised I don't have enough footage filmed to edit this together properly, uh, meaning I've got a lot of voiceover stuff to add, and not too many photos of what I actually got up to. Uh, so next time I go to an exhibition and say I'm going to do a vlog style video, I need to remember to actually film some vlog stuff. Uh, but no, so for now, I've got some photos of various different layouts in the background and I'm just going to talk you through the rest of my day. Okay, so having had a look at some of the really excellent layouts on display, I decided 
in the afternoon to return to some of the trade stands and have a look for any more bargains that were to be had. Uh, so I spent a lot of time browsing at uh, A and N rail models, ended up collecting uh, several white metal and brass kits. Think off the top of my head, I got some point levers, um, some GWR water towers, water crane kits, um, and some signs in brass. Just some little odds and ends that you wouldn't normally think to buy online, but are really nice to find in person. Having had a long, hard look at their wagons and locos, I decided not to pick anything up for the time being and moved on to GLR Bespoke Services. Uh, these were selling some electronic items as well as some automation products and some 3D printing services. All I actually bought from GLR uh, were some Gauge Master push buttons in red. Uh, these are for an upcoming project to make a control panel for the storage yard. Absolutely no idea when I'm going to do this, but I've been slowly collecting some odds and sods. Uh, so I've already got some red push button switches, so I've just added to my collection. So now I should have more than enough for all of the control panels for the layout. My final set of purchases for the day came from Booklaw Publications Limited. Uh, now I'm always a fan of searching for secondhand books that are railway related, either on eBay or secondhand bookshops, uh, and in this case, at the exhibition, there was plenty on display. I ended up buying three books, uh, two of which are more sort of track plan and modelling related, and one of which is a photographic book that has plenty of period photos from my era. I always find it's nice to get some reference material to base your modelling on. Uh, I used to be a subscriber to the Hornby magazine. Uh, more recently, I've just been purchasing a random magazine pretty much every weekend if I get the train to go see my girlfriend or my parents, and it gives me something to read. Uh, so no, it was nice to get these books. Um, I've got a collection of steam photograph books and diesel photograph books, in fact, that is ever-growing, and I'm sure will make an appearance on a coffee table in the railway room uh, whenever I do get round to getting my own house. Uh, the other two books then, um, yeah, as I said, they're more modelling inspiration. So I've got some track plans and some hints and tips for building micro layouts. Uh, now this is for an upcoming project I've got, which I'm not going to reveal just yet. It's not the branch line, but it is perhaps another station for the layout. Uh, and I'll tell you more about that in hopefully my next video, which will be on track plans. So thinking I was all shopped out, I did another circuit of various layouts, getting more footage uh, and photographs, which I'm sure I'll have used throughout this video. But something else I saw, or someone else in fact, uh, was Sam from Emperor's Path. Now, on some of the social media for the exhibition, I had seen that he would be attending, and I wondered um, if perhaps I'd be able to meet him and have a little chat. Uh, and I was quite amazed, actually, when I walked up to the stand that I was recognised straight away um, and we actually yeah, broke straight into conversation about my layout, about his layout. Uh, now, I've not been a subscriber for long for Emperor's Path, but no, I'm really, really enjoying his layout, uh, which is based on the bridge into Portsmouth, or more aptly, Portsea Island from the mainland. He was really, really nice to talk to. I showed him some upcoming plans for the layout uh, and yeah, just had a really nice chat. He also gave me some free merch, um, some stickers and a coaster for the Model Rail Replacement podcast, which I hadn't realized um, uh, I have been mentioned on there before, which was really, really nice to hear. So I've now got a coaster pride of place on my desk and I'll take that as for my uh, brief mention on the Model Rail Replacement podcast. So having had a talk to Sam, um, or SBJ as he's known, uh, for 10, 15 minutes, I don't know how long it was, uh, I had a spur of the moment idea, and I rushed back off to a &N Rail Models, uh, where I bought a Class 40, I think it was about £80 I paid, or 90 uh, for a BR Blue Class 40 from Backman, slightly older model, uh, but it's still a good looker. Uh, but no, I gave it over to Sam, um, paid my £15, I think it was, and he weathered it with the airbrush. It's really, really great to see how other people do their weathering. It, it's really inspirational, actually, to see different techniques used. And you think, ah, I could do this slightly differently on some of my own models. And yeah, it was great. Um, really, really, really good job. Um, and yeah, the loco really looks the part now it's done. And with that, I think it's the end of the video. I'm sorry this video has taken about a month for me to edit, and I'm not sure it's quite come out how I wanted it to, uh, but we'll see. Let me know in the comments if you like this style of video, and I might do something similar again in the future. Um, as for the next video, I do have various clips from stuff I've been up to at home. Um, I do have a video to edit on the baseboards for the branch line. Both of those, I think, will come up in their own separate videos. 
in the, I would say not so distant, but probably slightly distant future. By the time I get round to editing them, I am very busy at work. However, a slightly quicker video to make that I think will be coming up relatively soon, probably in the next fortnight or so, uh, although that's what I said about this one, um, is going to be on the track plan. I've had a few people question me in the comments and on Instagram about getting a tour of the layout. Unfortunately, I don't have a visit to my parents planned anywhere in the near future, uh, but I might be able to cobble together some footage I've got of the layout already without going home and visiting. Uh, but also, I want to do a video just showing all of the various track plan changes that have happened over the past two years, I think it's been, since I started working on the layout, and just show you the final plan, the big dream, uh, to get all of the modules done uh, whenever I do get a house um, that's big enough to fit it all in. Uh, obviously for now I've only got some of the modules in my parents loft but it will be expanded in the future whenever I get my own place. I've also got some plans as I said uh, for some micro diorama type stuff uh, that will fit into the bigger picture and I'll explain all in the next video. Bye for now.